Welcome all of you to the next uh, demo on this uh, fusion order management training. Nana here, and then I'll be conducting this training on this uh, uh, from 22nd of October onwards, from 9:30 p.m. to 10:40 p.m. It will be covering the basics of uh, actually order management. You'll be having a very good exposure on this now. Right? So today uh, I have already covered two such things: one on uh, the back-to-back -back transfer, and then one on back-to-back -back, uh, buy. <clears throat> now I'm going to do a back-to-back -back make in this uh, demonstration. And to have a glimpse of what exactly it is not fine. So you'll be having a good exposure to the order orchestration, fine. the distributed order orchestration, as well as the global order promising, as well as the supply chain orchestration. All the three things will be taught to you in detail. And so you'll be having a good grip on this, so then you'll be getting a very good exposure to the order management, even though it may not be covering to a great extent, but what happens, the fundamentals will be very strong for you after you complete this training. So let me go on and share my screen. <coughs> what exactly we're going to cover, we'll have a look at it now. So if you see the worksheet, which I have prepared for this training, actually, fine, it will be uh, creating, what happens, I'll be creating an implementation user now. And then afterwards, I'll be assigning certain roles to him. And then I will now go to the configure offerings, and then there are certain setups which are required for order management. So that will be done now. Then afterwards, an implementation project will be created. And then afterwards, the HCM information will be set as such now. And then afterwards, we'll now go ahead and then create locations. And then we will be having a, what happens, a good amount of idea about the financial structures also fine. So what exactly it is, even though it is not required for you, but what happens, you'll be having a good idea about what exactly it is now fine, legal jurisdictions, legal authorities, and then legal interests, and then finally legal entity will be created now. So we will be working on our own created entity. And so what happens, it will be, uh, is in fact, what happens uh, if you see, uh, it will be from an implementation perspective. Actually. <coughs> fine, it is not a simple training as such. Not fine. Nobody, uh, we will not be touching the vision at all. Fine, we will be having our own structure. Everybody will be having our own structure. I'll be giving you instance, but what happens? There is having some issues, and then if uh, the instance doesn't work properly, you may have to hire an instance from another one. I will not try my level best to what happens. I give one more instance also. Fine, two instances I'm trying, but I cannot assure you. But at least one instance I will not give you. But there is also having some issues here and there now. <coughs> so as a backup, what happens? You may have to be ready for hiring an instance in Hyderabad. So they. Provide instances uh, for uh, at the rate of uh, 2k per month for three months actually. Fine, 6k is the total cost. I will be giving you those informations also where exactly to hire now in case if my instance fails to operate upon properly. So, the afterwards, what happens? I'll be creating a chart of accounts value sets now. Fine, in this uh, uh, training, we are going to have three uh, segmental chart of accounts. We are going to have one of the company segment, one of the department segment, one of the natural account segment, and then afterwards, we'll not create a calendar. And then what happens? We'll now create a structure. Actually. Fine. A structure will be created, and then uh, once when the structure is now deployed, afterwards we'll now go ahead and then create values for this now. I'll now have two values for the company, two values for the department, and then I'll now have four values for the accounts actually. One is an asset, one is a liability, one is a <coughs> expense, and then one is a owner's equity. <coughs> fine, that much is basically required. So only the basic uh, basic accounting only will be done now. Fine, it will not go into any depth of it like uh, financials actually. And then afterwards we'll now get a ledger actually. <coughs> And then once one is completed, what happens? The ledger options and then other activities of financials will be completed now. So once when these things are completed, we'll now go there and then what happens? We'll now make it open. By this, what happens? The skeleton financial structure is now ready for you. Then we'll now open the period and then afterwards, we'll now go on and create our business units. And then uh, business units functionality will explain to you fully what exactly it is now. And then afterwards, the set assignments. Fine. The reference data set is a new concept which has been brought from, uh, 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 from the, the, what happens here? Uh, PeopleSoft. And then uh, that's a beautiful one. And then uh, that is uh, very useful for others, but not that useful for the supply chain, actually. And you know, see what exactly this. And then they brought a beautiful thing of what happens, uh, the service providers as well as clients, actually, as far as business unit is concerned. We'll be having an understanding about what exactly it is now. And then afterwards, we'll now jump into HRMS and then we'll now get a job, the department, the positions, and then one employment I'm going to create. I'll now have only one employee who is a legal employee for us now. And then with which we are going to do all the activities on this now. I know I know provision a lot of roles for him now. Fine. So, so many roles will be provisioned for the, uh, the users now. Fine. So, so many users, the, uh, he'll be provided so many results. These roles are sufficient for uh, what happens, they're performing an order management task as such now. Fine. And then I have to add this uh, manufacturing also because I'm still learning it and then I'm not very sure about uh, what, I, what exactly it is. So, before the completion of the training, if I learn manufacturing the setups, what happens, that will also be taught to you actually. Fine. This, this training is also going to be on a what happens a ready made item. I will be trying to learn manufacturing and then try to give it to you, but I'm not assuring you anything at all. Then afterwards, what exactly is an item org and then what is the inventory org will be taught to you. Then the facility ships, everything will be created now. Right? And then uh, we will now create the inventory org. <coughs> we will now be enabling it for uh, manufacturing also. I will not try to do it now. I will not try the rotations to organization. We will not create the sub inventories. The carriers and transit times uh, play a vital role as far as order management is concerned. And then as far as transfer orders is concerned, so that will also be taught to you. You will have a data access now. Fine, go there. <laughs> data access for users has been uh, introduced. There is a new concept from release uh, 12 onwards. Fine. So that will be uh, taught to you. 
Then afterwards, the basic setups for uh, uh, what happens, the inventory activity will be done and then finally an item will be created now. And then uh, there are two business processes on which what happens, we are going to push it to purchasing. One is a back-to-back -back buy and then one is a drop ship. So for which what happens, uh, we need a minimal uh, procurement setups now, fine, that will be tough. And then afterwards, the order management setups will now begin now. <clears throat> we'll now go ahead and then we'll get now fine. We'll now collect the planning data as well as what happens, the planning source systems where the inventory org is there after you collect it, what happens, it has to be enabled now. And then the order management parameters will be taught to you. <clears throat> then uh, on the shipping part, what happens is almost like what we have in EB is now fine. So you'll be learning about what exactly the release sequence role, what is the big slip grouping role, what is the shipping, ship confirmation role, what is the release role. So all these rules will be fully taught to you <clears throat> so that you'll understand about what exactly they're going to play now. Then the shipping parameters will be set now. And then we'll now create an infinite ATP, which is now without a global order policy. Now, fine, whether on an infinite supply ATP will be created. So without a global order policy, how to do this uh, one? There are two things. One is uh, with the GOP license and then without GOP license. Fine. <clears throat> so you'll understand this now. And then afterwards, some profiles will be set now. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll now go ahead and then do it now. We are going to create certain items now. So the pricing engine is not that powerful like EBS. Now, EBS has got plenty of uh, functionalities. But uh, what Oracle says is that you go for a CPQ license now. The configure uh, price and course. The CPQ license you go for. But uh, what happens now, uh, it is now gradually coming in. Release 13, what happens? Uh, some more things have already come. So what happens? We are going to discuss about all these things now. Why? What exactly it is. And then afterwards, I will now create a dropship item, BDB, buy, and then transfer items also will be created now. And then make all the four items will be created. They're all for advanced fulfillments, actually. Fine, that will be demonstrated to you. And then the contract manufacturing, what happens? The make and contract manufacturing, I don't have a license here, you know. So I will now try to demo in uh, what happens in a vision instance, actually, <clears throat> with a ready made item. And then uh, if I learn it, I will demonstrate to you with my own item also. Fine, let me see that what happens, how much I'm progressing on this now. So there will be uh, what happens, all these things are there. And then uh, you will now set up the global order promising fine GOP, how it is being set. Fine. It has got two, three components. One is the ATP rule, one is the sourcing rule, and then one is the assignment set. Fine. So we'll be setting it up at the GOP. And then uh, what about the above uh, will be demonstrated with the sales order with integration to supply chain orchestration. SEO is a very important concept and then it has been beautifully brought in now fine, in uh, Fusion. So that will be taught to you on this now. <clears throat> and then we'll now be demonstrating a simple sales order also without a GOP. <clears throat> and then uh, the back-to-back -back make and uh, contract manufacturing will be demonstrated in the mission distance actually. So, uh, and then uh, DO will be customized, fine. How the distribution or distributed order orchestration is working. It is almost equivalent to what we have as a, what's called a workflow in EBS now, fine. It's a one, and then it can be easily customized. And then uh, if you want to have an advanced customization, you must have the ADF knowledge, fine. Without ADF knowledge, fine, other application desktop fine, what happens, not possible. But some simple customizations can be done, that will be taught to you, fine. And then whole services, the pre-transformation rules, the credit check, the extensions, and then the diagnostics, and then the customer specific pricing. And then uh, configure order, I'm still learning, fine. Uh, I hope that I will be able to complete it before the OZ and so on, the order, I can even uh, give you a glimpse of what exactly it is not fine. So. And then uh, the agenda is still under construction, and then so what happens if you have any topics of interest, you please tell me what happens will not be added to over here. Now. And so what happens, it will be a more useful one. And then it will be, uh, it, instead of a monologue, what happens, it will be a dialogue. And then you will also be sharing your knowledge on this now. And then uh, we will now see about how best we can utilize this. Right? It's a low priced one. And then so what happens, you're not taking a very big risk. Uh, like what happens in Hyderabad and all, <clears throat> they don't create any structure at all. Fine. Right? If you go to any other place in the world, what happens? They will now open up a vision instance and then start the straight away create a sales order. You hear it is not so. You go in a very systematic and methodical manner. So that what happens? The implementation steps will be known to you. Actually, right? That is a very big advantage in my training actually. <clears throat> and then here this is what it is. <clears throat> Go there. So, uh, if you have any doubts, you can write to me at this uh, mail ID. Go there. And then you can even watch my uh, YouTube channel, Anantanada. And then here, what happens? I have made two more demos. Now, the first demo is on a what's called a transfer and ship, actually. Fine. And then the second demo is a buy and ship, actually. Fine. These two demos you can just see in this place. Now, fine. If you go to my channel, they will all be available as such. Now, first and second demo. The training is actually starting on 22nd of October, and then it is going to be from 9 30 p.m. to 10 45 p.m. in India. Fine. Every day for six days a week. And the fees is a uh, jujubi fine whether well, it's a very small amount only fine uh, he will definitely love uh, to see this now fine i i'm expecting this course to go approximately for a month's time not sure about it this is my maiden training as far as uh, uh, a commercial training we can say <clears throat> even though i have implemented this for one of the customers uh, what happens i have not done it to a great extent actually fine. it's only a very simple implementation uh, through which uh, I learned it actually. <clears throat> and then uh, there are so many advanced concepts that I find that, that we have never given to the Kenyan company as it's fine. 
fine. Uh, I have done it and then I cannot do this now. So uh, here, <coughs> if you see what happens, you please mention your email ID on your narration. Basically, otherwise what happens, uh, two persons having the same name, I'll be confused about who has made the payment actually. Fine. Please mention your email ID on your narration of your payment and then uh, give me a confirmation message and then what happens, uh, you get a confirmation message back, back from me that you are registered for the course actually. <coughs> so let us now make it uh, very enjoyable and then very uh, uh, learning actually fine. I am in fact one of the best trainers in the world actually because my coverage will be very in-depth and then uh, <clears throat> you will love it. Fine. So I have uh, banks, I have got four banks basically. Fine. One is an RBL bank and then one is a HDFC bank now. <clears throat> so you can even note down, I'm not passing, you can even pass this and then you can take the, uh, what happens uh, The details of the bank basically. <clears throat> and then afterwards I have got two banks to do. No, you can even make a payment via ICIC bank as well as a Kodak bank also. So you can make a payment through one of the banks uh, and then I will register you for the course as such now. <clears throat> And then it will be thoroughly enjoying. And then I have already completed training on uh, inventory and shipping as well as uh, procurement also. You can even buy those records. Fine. It's very cheap. So by which you are helping your teacher. <coughs> fine. Thanks for your help. And then uh, uh, it's a mutual uh, benefit. It's a win-win situation for both of us. No fine. So, that, so you will definitely learn a lot. as well, fine. This is what I'm feeling now. <coughs> so in this training, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a B2B make actually. This is the demo. The first demo is on a B2B transfer, and then the second buy is on a B2B uh, buy. Now, the third demo is on a what's called a B2B make actually. I'm here to learn manufacturing and then I'm learning it. And then let me hope that what happens, I'll be able to set up everything fully on my own. Now. <clears throat> so, here, uh, oh, let us understand what, what exactly is the discrete manufacturing process. Now, what is the purpose of manufacturing as far as uh, what happens, the ERP is concerned? So, the purpose of manufacturing is what? It will not tell you about how much progress has been made on a particular manufacturing process. Fine. How many items are completed, how many are in between, and then it will not tell you the status of each and everything. That is the first purpose. And then the second purpose is what? It will not tell you how much of money is being involved, how much of money is being spent on manufacturing the product. That is the second second purpose. The third purpose is what? How much of time? <clears throat> Fine. How much of time it is going to take? It's called lead time. So the lead time management is one purpose and then costing is one purpose and then what happens? The progression is another purpose. Fine. These are all the things on which what am I doing? So here I have given one such example now. Fine, go there. So we are going to manufacture what happens? 50 numbers of drum actually <clears throat> from sheet metal. Fine. So it involves uh, in this case what happens? Six, six operations. So operation number 10 is what? Sheet metal cutting. You are going to cut the sheet metal. And then uh, the material which is required is what? Sheet metal. And then the equipment which is required is cutting machine actually. And then the resource which you require for cutting it is what a sheet metal cutter is required. So with this, what happens? The operation then will be completed. And then afterwards, what happens? The long for operation number 20, where we have to bend it. Fine. The cut sheets will be bent actually. Fine. You're going to bend it now. Fine. For which you need a bending machine. And then uh, what happens? A sheet metal bender is required for operation number 20. The 30th one, we are going to perform a welding now. Fine. We need welding rods. And then a welding machine is required. <clears throat> and then what happens? The precision welder is also required as a resource. So you need materials. Fine. Which will now form part of your structure actually. Fine. And then afterwards, what happens? The resource will be coming in the work definition actually. So we have two components. One is what structures and work definitions as far as manufacturing is concerned. Now, fine. And then afterwards, in the 40th step, what happens? You're going to make a test of it by pouring water on it. Now, fine. If there is a leak, what happens? We will again go back from 40th to 30th step. It, so that means what? We will not be always going on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Fine. Every operation may even go zigzag way. <clears throat> fine. So if you, there is a problem in the testing, what happens? It will be the 30th operation will be going. So it will be branching back to the previous steps on any operation, any of the manufacturing process, depending upon the uh, testing results. Maybe at, what happens at the 50th stage, you may even call the customer actually. So if he says that there is some flaw on the what happens on the grading and finishing or something like that, what happens? It may even go to 20 or 30, depending upon whichever way you want. Right? So when you do go on a zigzag fashion, fine. Again, go back to some other operation, then come back to this place and jump from 20th to 50th, 60th. You're going to jump it now. Now the total manufacturing cost, let us say, for one drum, you're going to spend around 200 rupees. Fine, that's the cost of the drum, and then you're selling it in the market at 1,000 rupees. So when you perform an operation and then make a zigzag one, what happens? The additional cost incurred will not be considered for the cost of the material. Right? Let us say from 40 to 30 again go, and then come back to 40. So that means what? You are now spending additional money. That is because what happens, the product has not got properly done. So because of the mistakes or flaws or something like that, or because of the testing results, you know, going back back and forth now. So once when the item gets inventorized, upon, after finishing and painting, what happens, we are going to bring it to the finished goods stores. We call them as what happens, the activity is called uh, inventorization. So once when you inventorize it, what happens, the item will be, uh, what happens, uh, the whip, the work in process will be relieved by 200 rupees. And then the, what happens, the finished good will be charged by 200 rupees. 
So the finished good metal will be charged by 200 rupees. So the finished good will be having 200 rupees worth of what happens a drum. If you are making 50 drums, 50 into 200 rupees, 10,000 rupees worth of uh, finished good will be available on your finished goods actually. <clears throat> So this is the process by which what happens, the manufacturing gets completed. We'll be having multiple operations to perform in which what happens, the materials and resources will be issued upon as well as the equipments will be used for the operations basically. So let us go there in the system and then have a look at it. So let us now go there and then we'll now see about how it's all being performed. <clears throat> so let us go there and then we'll now create a sales order for this one. So let me create a sales order for this. <clears throat> I go there, click on create order. I'm now going to create a sales order to demonstrate this manufacturing business process now. <clears throat> Go there. <clears throat> so here, uh, what I'm going to do is I will now uh, once again. <clears throat> so uh, we are going to create a sales order for demonstrating this back-to-back -back make actually. I'm going there. I will now put the US one business unit. And if you are not having uh, multiple access to multiple business units, it will not. It will be having only one business unit. I will now put a this thing now. I will now choose one of the services now. Point that. And then let us now choose a B2B make item now. I go there. We'll now choose a B2B make item now. <clears throat> so that we are going to use it now. I go there. <clears throat> and then here, I'm not going to go, and then let us say, I'm not going to go for 10 pounds, quantum quantities. 10 quantities are required for this. <clears throat> so it comes with a process now, the price also. I go there. Click on add now. I'm now adding it to the line. So it says out of stock now. Actually. Fine, we don't have any stock at all. We are going to manufacture this process now. I go there. I will not say when it is going to expect it now. I will not say when you are expecting it now. So let us say 12th is the one. So let me put the Monday's date now. Fine, go there. 15th is the one. Let us say that I need it on 15th. So 15th the date on which what happens? We need it actually. Fine, go there. So the date of requirement is now 10. 10 such things are required now. Fine, go there. Go us. And that is a vision server actually. Fine, this is a vision server. So we need the server 10 numbers on 15th of this month. Fine, go there. Click on save now. By which what happens? The sales order number gets created. Now. <clears throat> and then afterwards, we will now submit for approval. So once we're in the submit for approval, after approval, what happens if we click on it, it will now go for approval. As of now, approval is not configured in the system now, fine, whether it will now go for pending approval, but it will now go to next step, actually, fine. We'll be seeing about how to configure the approvals also. We'll now click on refresh now. <clears throat> so once when it's refreshing, what happens, it will now go to the processing area, and go there, click on it. So it will be going for processing. Now you go to the actions and then here uh, you go there, click on actions and then go to the switch to fulfillment view. How you're going to fulfill the sales order. Fine. So sales orders is getting fulfilled by uh, very many orchestration methods. Now, what happens if you, if you click on switch to fulfillment view, it will now go to this place. It says 90404 is the one. Fine, go there. So we will now, uh, what happens, uh, take a copy of this now. Fine, go there. 90404 is the one. So through which we are now going to fulfill this uh, needs of the customer actually. And then if you go to the fulfillment lines, it will now show you the DO number. The distributed order orchestration number will be coming up over here. Click on the hyperlink of the DO number. And once you click on the hyperlink of the DO number, you can now see that distributed order orchestration process is now has uh, triggered a generic uh, process basically. Fine. So had it been a ship only, it will be, uh, be triggering a ship only business process. If it is a bill only, a bill only will be coming. And then if it is only a return, what happens? A return order will be a process. So different, different orchestration processes will be triggered based upon what happens. May, mainly because of item attributes only. That's why it is. So it's not coming. And since what happens, uh, this item is a back-to-back -back make now. Fine. The system has introduced one more flow. So this is called a Gantt chart. Fine. A Gantt chart is basically nothing but a, a time scheduling chart actually. Fine. So this will not tell you which activity has to be performed when actually. Fine. So we need it on, on 14th. So that what happens, uh, we need a, a 15th is a request date. So once when you complete it on this date, what happens, it will be possible for us to ship it in the next time to the customer's location. Now. So uh, uh, what happens, uh, your request orchestration supply is now initiated. And then afterwards, the past task is now made for just for making check of it now. I will now click on refresh now. And you can now see that everything will be getting completed. And then each and everything is completed now. What happens, it will now go to the awaiting shipping. Now. It is now ready for shipping, but it has been manufactured actually. So now we will now run one concurrent fine go there. We will now run one concurrent for what happens releasing the planning recommendation actually and go there. We will now run a concurrent called release planning recommendation now. <laughs> go there, go to the more and then go to the schedule process and then we will now release the planning recommendation. So then what happens? It will be creating a supply order actually. Fine. Click on schedule process. So supply order has to be created now. Fine. The release percentage, plan percentage, recommendation percentage in your tab now. Release planning recommendations are one. So let us now run it now. <coughs> Release planning recommendation. So once when you search for it, it will be coming and go that click on it and then it will now trigger a series of our own concurrence now. Fine. They will all be doing it. So by which process 
what happens? The DOO will be getting into phase two supply chain, actually, supply chain orchestration. So the supply chain orchestration will not begin now. So where the manufacturing is involved, actually. So it will now create a supply order. So the supply order will now make and then what happens? It will now make it. So the purpose of supply chain orchestration is to what? To see to you that the inventory is available on the shipping sub inventory. Fine. On the shipping sub inventory, we're going to ship it to the what's called customers actually. So the main concurrent which is responsible for interfacing it to SEO is what this one process supply chain orchestration phase. So once when this is completed, whatever you cannot see a supply order getting created. So as of now, if you go on and see on the fulfillment lines, if you go to the fulfillment lines, in the fulfillment lines, if you go down <coughs> in the fulfillment lines, you go down and then have a look at this. If I go there, so again, whatever got struck my go there. On the fulfillment lines, if you go there, and then here it's not fine. Uh, ship back to back goods basically. Fine, go there. And then it is now awaiting shipping. Let me again go there and then see. Now I go there. Go to the fulfillment lines now again. It has not gone there. <coughs> Such now. So let me click on it. So it will be going to the fulfillment lines now. It will be showing all the information over here now in the bottom. <coughs> if there is a geo party, what happens? There is a problem. It will also show you what exactly is the problem actually. So it's still not going there now. Fine. Let me re query the sales order. Fine. There's some problem. Just come now. So you click on done now. And then come out of it. And then let me re query it now. <coughs> So click on done and then come out of it now. Otherwise, what happens? They go to the home icon and then do it now. Click on the home icon. So on the home icon, what happens? It will be coming back to the home icon basically. So let me go to the order and then what happens? Let me query the order number. Fine. 90404 is the order number now. So 90404 is the one. So let me click on the magnifier. It will not query the order now. <clears throat> so here I go to the actions and then I go to the switch process to fulfill view. I'm now switching to the fulfillment view. And then in the fulfillment view, what happens? I will now go there and I click on the DO number now. The bottom, you have a demo number. If I click on it, it will go to the next page. In the next page, I click on the fulfillment area and go there. It is not going to the, the chart is not shown as awaiting shipping. And go there. If you click on the supply details, if you click on the supply details and then go down, what happens? You can now see the SCO is now created actually. So let me go on then. What happens? I click on it. Now fine. This is a supply chain orchestration number. Now fine. It is now awaiting supply actually fine. from manufacturing. Actually. Fine. Click on it now. So once when you click on what happens, the supply order details is now shown. So initially, we are seeing the DO, now we are seeing the supply order. Now, work order is now created. That is what it is like. Fine, go there. You can now see the status is what work order created actually. Fine, go there. So, work order is now created fine, on the supply source as such now. Fine, we have to now execute this work order. Fine, if you click on the first line, it will also is in process now. Fine, go there. Here, this line, what happens? You can now see the work order is created. Fine, go there. So, work order number is also coming. So, SCO will now give basically three recommendations either a buy or a make or a transfer. In the buy, there is nothing. In the transfer, also, there is nothing. And then we have a make now. Fine, go there. The make, we have work order. So the work order number is on 051 or fine, is what I see. You can take a copy of it now and keep it also fine. Work order number fine. So work order number is one. So uh, if you click on the work order number, fine, click on the work order number, it will not show you <coughs> what exactly it is not fine. It is now released for production actually. We have to manufacture this product now. So the work order is now released for production. If you click on it, it will not show you the status of it. What is the work definition which is involved on this now? Fine. Work definition is the way in which you are going to do the product now. Fine. And then you go to the item structure, it will not show you what are the items which are required for manufacturing this product. If you click on the details, it will not show you other things also, like information on this now. And then the completion information, how much has been completed, it will not show you. So in the nutshell, what happens, it will not show you on, based on this, all these things now. And then click on done and then come out of it. How many operations are there? there are seven operations are there for this work order. Fine, click on the operations. Fine, just like I told you in the previous case. What is what? The chases assembly. What is the what happens? The power on test. We will now power it down and then test it. Fine. Then base server uh, assembly. And then afterwards, what happens? The 40th operation, 40th operation, 60th operation, and then 70th operation. So this is this many operations are there. And then if you go and then see the reservations, how much has been reserved against this. So we have now reserved quantities 10 now. Fine. As and when the manufacturing is completed, now reserved for the sales order actually. So the operations as well as the quantity which is required for each and every operation is now is true. You know, and these are the components that are required for the first operation now. So you need this now. Uh, and then what are the resources which are required? So just like what I have told you in the previous case now. In this case, what happens? What are the operations? And then uh, what are the material requirement? What are the resource requirement? Equipment requirement? Everything will be shown over here for each and every operation. Now. So here it is now showing you each and everything. And what are the items which are required for the tenth operation? And then which resources are required? So similarly, what happens? There are seven such operations which are there as far as this particular thing is required. How much of quantity of resources required? There is also a technician, two technicians required. Assembler, one assembler is required. So tester is required. And one test, two testers are required. Here assemblers. So likewise, what happens? It will be showing you the resource requirement as well as what happens. Like. So there is one thing called count point and auto charge. Then it is almost similar to what we have in e-business basically. 
and then uh, I don't know whether I will be able to demonstrate those things or not because I had to learn manufacturing actually fine. I'm not uh, very conversant on this now. Let us hope, let us hope that what happens, I do a certain amount of uh, learning and then let me create my own item, my own resource, everything, and then let me try to do it in the real training actually fine. Let us hope though. And, uh, click on that now, come out of it now. So uh, the work order number is what? The number of point W work order iPhone 051 and then 1023 is the one. So let us go there and then try to manufacture this seven step basic process now. Find the right click and then what happens? Duplicate it now. Going over there and then I'm now making one more thing <clears throat> and then let me go to the manufacturing area. So go there and then click on the manufacturing area. Find here. Initially, you'll be having a work definition, which what happens, we'll be creating a routing actually. And then in the work execution, we go and then execute the job. Is it? Click on the work execution now. So we have to first of all switch over to 051 or now. This is all change organization to what happens, 051 now. So that is the place where the work order has been created now. 051. Click on OK now. So once I give up, okay, what happened? The organization has come now. So I am in the work definition, work execution area. Fine. Go there. Let me do the job. It's a 1023. I will now go to the execution product production and then what happens? The review the dispatch list now. We are reviewing it now. <clears throat> we are going to review it now. Go there. So, what else? so you can now see the 1023 is available over here now. Go there. So here I'm going to perform the execution now. It has got a seven step process now. Go there. Expand this now. 1023. And go there. So the first step is what then? Fine. I can even quickly complete it. Fine. Go that. We can even quick complete it. Fine. Go that. Click on or complete to the details. Fine. Click on complete the details. So we need certain resources as well as that. Three components are required. Fine. Click on complete the complete the details. So here, uh, what happens is the operation number. Fine. How many is complete? How many is rejected? How many is scrapped? I'm not saying. Fine. Go that. I'm not going to complete everything. And click on next now. It goes to the backlash materials now. Fine. Go that. There are three components which are required now. Fine. Go that. So we need 10, 10, 10. Fine. Go that. Transact. We need what happens that this needs uh, what happens required is 40, required is 25. Go there. So 1, 2, 1, 4 or 1. So I am now choosing all these things. I'm not making a change or all. If I want to make a change, I can even make a change on this now. I click on next now. And then afterwards, what happens? Auto transact resources. Find resources are getting automatically transacted. So then what happens? Uh, the job gets the job will be earning the cost of the resource actually. Find there's an assembler is required. Find there. So the what else? And then it will now show uh, what are the uh, time basis basically. Fine, is a variable or a fixed, and then all these things are there. So after having inserted everything, and then if you want to make any change, what happens? You can go and click on save now, by which what happens? Operation number 10 will be getting completed. It has got seven operations, fine, click on save and close now. So now you can see operation number 10 is now completed. Number of units completed, operation number 10 for the work quarter, so and so is 10, 10 each now. The next operation is 30 at the work center for the base server assembly. Fine, what else? The next operation is what? 30 is the one. So it's now ready for the 30. Now, if you go on and expand it and then see the operation number 30 is now ready for this. No, fine, go there. So uh, it's not done. So you can even quick complete it actually. Fine, go there. You can even go on and quick complete it. Fine, click on quick complete now. Fine, go there. So click on quick complete by which we can now perform this now. Fine, go there. Click on quick complete. If you go for completion of the details, it will not show you each and everything. Now, fine, go there. Click on quick complete. So operation number 30 is now getting completed. Fine, go there. You can see number of units completed the operation number 30. The work order is now what? 10 now. And then next operation is 50. There's a rack cabinet assembly in the one. So you go there and then again expand it and then I will now quick complete now. So if you want to modify the resource supply as well as the material supply, you can go to the complete details and then make a modification. Otherwise, you can even as and when the operations are getting complete. Remember, you will not just like that do it now. Go there in this place. What happens if you go there? After you complete the 20th operation, you complete the system actually. After the building is completed physically, practically, right? Physically, you have done the operation, then you go to the system and then complete everything. So here, what happens? I know quick complete. Fine, go there. Click on quick complete. So quick complete is what this operation is now getting completed. Now, fine, go there. So 50th operation is now completed. So for which what happens? Ten each, ten numbers of uh, what happens? The particular server has now been made ready. Next is 70th operation. Fine, 70th is a validation optimization operation. Go there. I will not expand it. It doesn't show you here actually. Fine, the operation number is not showing you. So in the 70th, fine, click on quick complete. Now, fine, go there. We are now doing the 70th operation. Now. Number of units completed the operation number 70 uh, uh, to sub inventory completed. Now it is uh, the final operation and then it has gone to the sub inventory also. It has got inventorized also. Fine, ten each. Fine, one, one, one. So it is all done completed. Now, fine, go there. So 10, 1, 0, 2, 3 is vanished from the list of uh, what happens uh, the review dispatch list because it's now fully completed and then it has now gone to the sub inventory also. Fine, go there, one, one. So click on done. So we have performed the manufacturing actually. Fine, after you do everything, what happens? You are recording it now. Fine. So the BIP will be relieved and then what happens? The finished good, the completed sub inventory. The, it's, it's gone to the completed sub inventory. It will be getting charged. Fine, click on done now. So the manufacturing process is now complete. So you go back onto this now. Fine, go there in this place. If you go to the manage orders. Now what happens? You go there and then click on the orchestration plan. Now. If you click on the orchestration plan, what happens is no result. Work order is not yet completed, but what happens is it to communicate to the so this thing and click on refresh now. So by refreshing it, what happens it will be uh, getting completed actually. So if you go to the make area, 
<coughs> have a look at it now. And the work order which is now released. And then it is now saying it is in production actually. Fine. So it is actually, it has now crossed the production and then it is now completed actually. It takes some time for you to, what happens, have a look at it now. I click on refresh now. So now what happens, if you go on and see the sales order, it will now say what happens. This is, is not, the material is available for this. I click on done now. So from the supply, if you give it done, it will come back to the original one now. It is a DO order fulfillment. Fine, wait one second. Now, uh, in the DOO area, if you go there and then refresh it, you can now see now it's saying goods available. Fine, go there. Now that means what after manufacturing, the goods are made available now. So if you again click on the orchestration number, what happens? You can now see the completion of this now. Fine, go to the orchestration plan. You can now see what happens. The manufacturing is now completed. Fine, click on make now. And then here it now shows you hey, what happens. You have to go up and down now. Fine, click on the up. And then now is the work order is completed. Message is come. Work order completed. Now coming back. Go there. Click on it again. And then you can now see on the orchestration plan. You can now see that what happens. Work order is now completed. So up to this completion, it is the responsibility of supply chain orchestration. The fulfillment will be done by the DO. DO will be basically fulfilling it actually. So go there. So you can now see in this place. Fine, it's not not complete. Fine, work order completion. This is now still in process actually. Fine, click on done now. And now you are in the main process now. Fine, we are going to ship it to the customer actually. Since the manufacturing is completed, we are going to ship it to the customer. Goods are available now. So let us now open up one more page and find go there, go to this place. And then let us now go to the inventory and then do the shipping. Go to the home icon now. Fine. Since the manufacturing is completed, I am going to the home icon. I go down and then click on the inventory now. Uh, in the inventory, <coughs> if you go there, we will now uh, take up what happens. Uh, we click on this now. <coughs> And then here you go there and then go to the shipments area now. Fine. There are five areas of this. You go to the shipment area. So in the shipment area, what happens? You go there and then click on it. And then let us now go to the manage shipment lines. Fine. So for a transfer order, we had to go to the manage shipments. And then for a sales order, we had to go to the shipment lines. And we'll go to the manage shipment lines. And then through which we are going to ship it now. Go there. The sales order number is what? 90404 now. Fine. Go there. 90404. And then give a what happens? Make a search now. It will not show you. Go there. <coughs> Uh, here, what happens is uh, they have added one more extra column as what the schedule ship date and uh, make it as what today and the next seven days actually. And then make a search, it will be showing you what that it wants. It will be ready for this. 90404 is ready for shipment. This is the item which has to be shipped now. It is already manufactured and then ready now. The vision server is now manufactured. It will not kept ready. So let us now create a shipment number. Fine, click on the auto create shipment by which what happens the shipment number will be getting created. Click okay, on auto create shipment. So 25214 is the shipment number which is now created. Fine, click on OK. It will be coming up on the top. You'll be explained the full shipping process in this training. What exactly the different rules which contribute to the shipping actually. Now, what happens if you click on the shipment number again? Fine, there's no open. Fine, click on the shipment number. It will now show you the status of this. Fine, click on the shipment number. Go there. It says what? It is now ready to release actually. So we have to perform a release now. Fine. What exactly is the pick release? What is the pick confirm? What is the ship confirm? Everything will be taught in this training now. Go there. So here in this place, what happens? I go there. Go to the actions and then, and then launch the pick release. So we are now picking the release. Fine, go there. From the completed sub inventory, what happens? It will be brought to the staging sub inventory now. And click on the pick release. So it is now running a concurrent program. And click on OK. It will all be fully taught the training assets. Fine, go there. It's not done. So here I will now give a save and close. 25214 is the one. Fine, 25214. If you save it, what happens? You can now see there is no save now. Fine, go there. So the present status of the sales order is now ready to release. It will now got, come to the staging area actually. 25214 is one. So if I go on then what happens? You come out of it, find seven close and then come out of it. And then 25214, I'm going to query on this now. So if you see, it is now staged actually. Fine. The line status was ready to release. Now it has been staged now. Go there. So here I will now go there. I will now click on the shipment again now. Shipment number again. And then once when this done, what happens? You go there. And then here I will now say how much I'm going to ship now. Depending upon my availability of manpower, the packing machines and other facilities in the shipping area. I will now go into ship it now. Fine, it say I am not going to ship 10 numbers now. And then I will now put the ship to quantity as what 10. And then I will now click on ship confirmation now. I click on ship confirmation by which what happens? The ship confirm it has not got ship confirmed. That means what? It has now left our premises and then it is now going towards the customer actually. So the shipping is now completed now. Fine, that. Now if you go and then what happens? You query your sales order again. Fine, that. So here it will now say what happens? The status is not awaiting shipping. It is now going to ship actually. I click on the refresh now. So you can now see the status is ship actually. So click on this. What happens? That you're going to the status of ship. <clears throat> so once when the ship, the activity is now getting completed. Now it takes some time for the updation actually. It is now still saying awaiting shipping only, but it is already shipped actually. <clears throat> so wait for some time, and then once when it is done, what happens? You can now see this. Now this will be reflected on the what happens your supply order also. Fine. If you click on the supply order, it will also show you the same status now. Fine. So it will now the status will now become fulfilled actually. The fulfillment activity is now complete now. Fine. Click on refresh now. So the ship confirmation activity is now completed. So what happens? It will be updating on the, this thing also. 
it takes some time now. Now on the refreshment, what happens? It says uh, it was previously awaiting shipping. Now it has been shipped actually to the customer actually. Now it will be getting interface to what happens AR, and then the status will now progresses to what awaiting billing actually. If I click on refresh now, the status will now go to awaiting billing now. So the status will be going to awaiting billing. So since it is now shipped, what happens? You go there and then have a look at the, the again the supply order now. Click on it. <clears throat> So click on supply order. Now what happens? The, this is now closed. The activity is now complete, and then the process is now fulfilled. Actually, find the status. The SEO is now saying fulfilling. So all the four activities are completed. The first three are the responsibility of the supply chain orchestration. The final one is the responsibility of the distributed order orchestration, by which what happens? All the activities are completed on the supply chain orchestration. If I click on done, and then come out of it. The main the main screen. I'm now going to come into the order area and go there. If we go and then refresh it, it will now say awaiting billing. Actually. It will be interface to AR and then what happens? It will now go to meeting from there. What happens? We had to import the order invoice and then finally do what? Yeah, uh, invoice creation. So once when that is done, what happens? It will be getting close now. Fine. So we had to go there and then do it now. Fine. 9040411. So let me go to another browser now. Fine. I cannot do it in the same browser now. Fine. I will go to another browser. And then uh, we have one uh, ready made, uh, what happens? Yeah, thing is available. Fine. One of the AR, uh, what's called, uh, yeah, user is there. So through which we can now do the import of the order invoice now. Fine. So that tick copy is this, and then I will now put on this place now. Paste it over here now. Fine. Up to this, I'm pasting it. <coughs> so that I will now move it because for multiple users we need multiple browsers actually. Go there. So it's a what happens? A Tracy P R E C E Y Tracy Allen is the one. So let me log in with her now. And then she is now going to do the import of the order invoice. In reality, what happens? Everything will be fully automated now. And go there, click on it, and then she will now do the order invoice import now. Will now go to the schedule process now. So she will now import the order invoice. I click on the schedule process. We will now import the order invoice now. I go there, import order invoice. Auto percentage, sorry. Auto percentage. Again, the percentage and the time now. Import order invoice now. So we go to import the order invoice now. Import order invoice now. And then we will now pass on the parameter of the sales order actually. So the sales order number is what? We have 90404 is the one. So we go there and then we get uh, now one more thing is what the transaction source is a DOO now. Fine. From that is not coming up now. So the DOO is a source now. Fine. Distributed order of the source. You go down and then in this place 90404 is the one. <coughs> I will now put the sales order number. 90404. And then give it a tap. 90404. I'm now passing on these parameters and then click on submit now. So by which the import process will not take place now. So I'm now submit it. So uh, we will now have a look at it now. Fine, it's not going on. So once when the uh, importing is now completed, the sales order gets closed. So it is the responsibility of the CSR to what happens, uh, push it into AR and then create an invoice, and then afterwards it is the responsibility of the collections team, AR team will be doing it now. Fine, go there. Now you go to this place, it's now completed now. Fine, go there. Here you will now go to the what receivables and then go to the billing now. Fine, you go and then make a query on this one. receivables billing the area where I'm going to query this invoice. So click on this uh, task carousel and then query on this uh, what happens. Uh, you go to the what manage transactions. You go to the manage transactions area, receivables billing area. And then the reference number is nine zero four zero four is the one. And then the transaction source is a mandatory one. Fine, go there. One of them is a mandatory actually. Fine. I will now choose the distributed order orchestration. With these two inputs, what happens? I'm going to make a search of this invoice now. So click on it. So the billing would have been done now. Fine. The invoice would have been created actually. Then go and search for it now. You can now see the invoice is now ready for processing for them. So AR will now start to process it now. So once when this activity is now completed, I go there what I say, select it and then click on edit now. I will now click on the hyperlink on the transaction number now. You can also say the invoice is now getting ready. So the invoice uh, can be printed as such now, I go there with a view image, it will be showing you what exactly, how the uh, look and feel of the printed invoice will now have a look at it now. And can have a look at it now. Of course, we will not be touching the AR part, I'm just only demonstrating it so, you know, this is how it will be looking at it now. I click on OK, by which what happens? The complete order to cash life cycle is now getting complete now. now. If you go there and then have a look at it, now I'm going to refresh it now. I'm going to avoid billing. I click on refresh now. You know, see, the activity is now completed now. So it will not go to closed. It's not closed. So the activity of the sales order is now completed. Now go to the main screen now. We are in the, in, inside in the fulfillment area. So here also, what happens? You know, see, it's all closed actually. Click on now. <clears throat> so uh, this is the way what happens uh, you're going to what happens uh, fulfill the customer's needs actually. <clears throat> I click on refresh now. It's not saying process now, but it will be what happens, it will be completed as such. <clears throat> so it's not status is closed. The line status is now closed actually. 
So once when the payment is collected, what happens is the header also will not get closed. Actually. The payment is not collected. So line level, what happens is we are already uh, done the, uh, what happens is the closure of this. So this is a good training actually fine. You'll be learning a lot on the fundamentals of this now fine. Even though you may not be going into a great, what happens to in depth of it now fine. Uh, you will now learn uh, what the uh, uh, the pricing part to a uh, great extent actually. And then the GOO, the global order form is in GOP will be learned. And then the supply chain orchestration will be learned as well as the distributed order orchestration also be, will be the most advanced. Apart from that, some other topics are there. And then I'm still learning. And then what happens if I learn something more, what happens that will also be demonstrated. And then uh, it will now go for about a month's time. That is my approximate expectation. Of my life. So let us now come join and then what happens I learn and cross for this subject. So it's uh, much better when compared to the other institutes in the world, actually. Fine. They will not be covering to this depth, actually. And then uh, it will be really a very good one as far as <clears throat> this thing is concerned. So I hope that what happens, you will definitely get a lot of involvement and then you will be learning a lot now. Right? So with this, what happens, I conclude this demonstration of a B2B make actually. So let me uh, soon try to see you on the real training, which is starting on 22nd now. Right? So bye for now and then we will now meet again. Thank you. <clears throat>